there's a lot of parallels that Iron Man actually has, um, biblical parallels that almost kind of pin him as the savior. You guys will check this out. There's even comments that are made in the film that are directly taken from the Bible, such as this one. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar. There you go. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar, which is a line yeah. that's directly taken from? Yeah, from Jesus the Bible. Christ. From Jesus, right? Yeah. So uh, here it is in Matthew 22, 21. It says, They said unto him, Caesar's. And then he said unto them, Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. So this is when Jesus was getting confronted with the Pharisees and they were asking him, you know, who do we pay our money to? And he quotes this exact line. So I found that kind of interesting. Yeah, there's another scene here where um, in the very beginning of the movie, Tony Stark is describing how his company is really uh, a company that's, that's making weapons to destroy large entities. And he titles this one with a biblical name. For your consideration, the Jericho. As you can notice, he holds his arms out in sort of a Christ-like pose, right? Now, who destroyed Jericho? Is that oh, the dear. devil? No. No, that was that was Jesus, yeah. right? So there's this parallel here once again with, with him being like a Christ type. When he became Iron Man, this is the first time that that he like almost dies, literally, and they take him to a, a cave, and that's where they put that little thing on his chest and um, which saves his life. And here's a here's him inside of the cave. I've seen many wounds like that in my village. We call them the walking dead. So he makes a reference that he's like the walking dead, which is another Christ-like yeah. type reference, right? But he's in the cave for three months, being, <laughs> becoming Iron Man, right? And he comes out of the cave, literally blowing people away and destroying them, right? So we start to see now a stark contrast of if this is really like a Christ type or a savior of the world, is that really something that Jesus would do, right? Come out of the cave and start destroying life? The Bible says this in John 10:10 10, 10, that a thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The very purpose of Jesus was not to hurt and destroy people. Yeah. In fact, yeah. he spent most of his time running around healing people and helping them, right? right. When um, you analyze the comic books, um, there is uh, some references even in the comic drawings that he's just like Jesus. In fact, this is Tony Stark here. And as you notice, he's in a very Jesus-like pose. This is actually a sculpture of, um, of Jesus and Mary. Yeah, that's and not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. And I even took the um, comic book here and overlaid it. I mean, look at this. He's even literally in the exact same pose. That is purposeful. That's what I was noticing. Her hand hmm. gesture is identical. Identical. Yeah. So I believe that this is definitely purposeful to make him like a Christ type, right? But the bad guy in the movie, as we start to uncover who these bad guys are that, that, that all the Marvel Universe is always fighting against, guys that want to take over the world or that want to destroy the entire world or half the universe, right? They have a lot of similarities to God or God's, God's, God's government. So the bad guy in the first Iron Man, his name is Obadiah. I don't want a body count to be that's, our only that's legacy. That's what we that's do. It. We're iron mongers. We make weapons. It's my name on the side of the building. And what we do keeps the world from falling into chaos. So basically, the bad guy, Obadiah, says what we do for a living is try to prevent the world from falling into chaos, right? by destroying things with these weapons that are called the Jericho <laughs> weapons and stuff, right? Now, when you look at Obadiah Stain, Obadiah is actually Hebrew for slave of God. The biblical theophorical name means servant of God or worshiper of Yahweh. Now, I find that really interesting that the bad guy is literally the servant or, or slave of God. And the Bible talks about um, Jesus is being the servant of God, right? Isaiah 42, 1, this is a prophetic interpretation of Jesus. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. So I think that is not by chance that they named him literally servant of the Lord. So let's move to Iron Man 2, okay? So in order for this to be a true statement to basically say that they're, they're literally warring 
God against the devil, but they're kind of flipping the model around, there has to be consistency throughout all of them. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. So it's not like just one film that you're going to notice this. We've got to see this thing throughout a lot of different films. In Iron Man 2, uh, here he is. They're once again giving you the imagery that Tony Stark is sort of a, a, a Christ type, and here he's offering to save the world through the means of peace. He's in a court scene, and he's um, being questioned in front of the judge. I mean, Jesus was in court being questioned, questioned in front of the judges, too. And uh, we know that Jesus is called the Prince of Peace, right? So listen to this scene. We're safe. America is secure. You want my property? You can't have it. But I did you a big favor. I have successfully privatized world peace. So here he is bringing world peace. That's kind of his mission. Um, in fact, the same mission that Jesus had. You have heard it said, uh, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless those that curse you, do good to those that hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, right? Jesus was the Prince of Peace. He, he came to really share how we were supposed to uh, live peacefully. So now, if, if, God, if the enemy is like God um, and the good guys like Jesus, that seems like a good thing, right? Right, so on the surface, when you watch these and you kind of recognize, okay, there's some Jesus-type parallels, but when you really analyze his character, his character is totally different than Jesus, right? He's totally this rich uh, narcissist. Did, was Jesus rich? No. Did he come to the earth in all of his wealth? No. No way. So who is the rich one in the world that can promise you anything, right? right. So even though he's set up to be like Jesus, that's more of an antichrist type character. So here the bad guy in here, Ivan, um, you can see things written on the wall. It says Tony Stark is here to save the world and uh, Ivan is here talking about Tony Stark. Listen to what he says. If you can make God bleed, people will cease to believe in him. So he says if you could make God bleed, people will cease to believe in him, right? But that's kind of the whole angle that, that the Iron Man 2 is taking. He's trying to hurt Tony Stark and Iron Man. Here's the picture. Tony Stark is here to save the world. Once again, that imagery we see popping through. I guess what's fascinating about that statement he just made is God did bleed, you know? Yeah. And instead of people not believing in him, people believe in him because of that. So this scene right here, Ivan is in prison. Tony Stark comes to visit him in prison, which I think is very interesting. Um, and the dialogue that happens back and forth um, really kind of starts to begin to show you a picture of who the Iron Man really is. You come from a family of thieves and butchers. And now, like all guilty men, you try to rewrite your own history. And you forget all the lives the Stark family has destroyed. Speaking of thieves, where did you get this design? My father. I'm Tom Uncle. Well, I never heard of him. My father is the reason you're alive. So it's very interesting that he says he came because of his father. And Tony Stark goes, I've never heard of him before. And he goes, my father is the reason you're alive. Now, can the devil make that statement? No. no, he cannot, right? In fact, the very reason all life exists is because God allows it, right? Satan wants to destroy it all. Right? And he says to Tony Stark, you come from a th family of thieves and murderers, right? You can't, you can't make that comment towards God. He's not a thief, right? The devil's known as the thief. So there's some imagery here that really he, he has uh, um, some sort of Christianity in sort of a twisted, bent way. He wears a Maltese cross. He has these whips and he looks like he's been whipped himself. White bird on his His name is, like yeah, that. white bird on his shoulder, <laughs> right? Very interesting, kind Long of like hair. the Holy Spirit, right? Long hair. I mean, there's some parallels here that are very strange. <laughs> Now John 8:44 says you belong to your father the devil and you want to carry out your father's desires he was a murderer from the beginning so they're twisting your idea and perception of who's who in the story um, but listen to how Tony Stark gets psychologically analyzed and listen to how they describe him. He's reading his analyzation of himself. Mr. Stark displays textbook narcissism. 
So he displays textbook narcissism, right? Mm. You can't attribute that to God. No. God is so right. others focused. In fact, he loved the world so much he gave his son to die for those that don't even care about him, right? The opposite of narcissism. It's the devil that's narcissistic. So let's talk about Iron Man 3. In the storyline of Iron Man 3, and when they play the trailers for you, they don't show you exactly who the bad guy is. So they set it up that this particular character that Ben Kingsley played is the bad guy. And so the voice that you hear is going to be his voice. Listen to how he addresses people and see if this rings any Christian alarm bells. Ladies. Children. People call me a terrorist. I consider myself a teacher. So, he addresses people as ladies, children, sheep, right? Mm. Those are all names that Jesus uses to describe our relationship with him, right? We are the bride of Christ, yeah. we are his sheep, and we so, are literally children of God, right? And he says, some people consider my, me to be a teacher right? Jesus was a teacher. So there's some strange parallels with him and uh, Christianity. Now, in this second trailer that they put, put out for this movie, there are flashing scenes that's happening all throughout the movie. And the camera flashes through a scene where you see this character that Ben Kingsley plays. He raises his arms up in the air. And so I went back and I paused it and I looked at what it is says on his robe because every time something is written on the screen, that tells me that sometime a director had to make a decision. Hey, write that on there. No, no, nothing, no words are gonna automatically. Yeah, they didn't go to the store and buy this. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So this is actually made. So if you'll notice right here, what does it say right here? Redeemed through blood. Redeemed through blood. Who's, who's redeemed through blood? We are, right? That's, that's something that describes our salvation through Jesus, really. And they're putting this on the bad guy and he's got his arms outstretched like in a Christ-like pose. We are redeemed through blood. And in fact, the Bible has lots to say about this. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In whom you have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins and according to his riches and grace. And Isaiah 44, 22 says, I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return unto me, for I have redeemed you. I think it's beautiful that we are redeemed through yeah, Christ, yeah. you know? But they're painting him as he's the evil one, right? But the twist in Iron Man 3 is this isn't even really the real bad guy. In fact, they put him as an actor who's in prison, but he's really just an actor. He's not even like a real bad guy. So it's almost like even just another little jab at God, like, oh yeah, you came into this criminal world, but you're not really, you know, a sinner and you're not really a bad guy. I find that is, is, is kind of an interesting parallel. But all of these guys that are in prison, they want to hear him do his like little dark voice that he always does. So listen to this scene and see if you see any Christian parallels with this. Uh, me and the boys was just wondering if you could do uh do the voice. Fletcher, it's not something I would just turn on. I'm not your meat puppet. Oh, very well. <coughs> and you will never see me coming. You'll never see me coming. Thief in the night. Right? Yeah. Wow. Thief in the night, seriously and he's talking to other criminals, you know what I mean? And one thing that's kind of interesting is when I actually was looking for this up in, in, the, um, in the internet just to even find this clip, they titled this clip, Hail to the King. And I think that in the film, they actually even call him the King. <laughs> 